Hi Taurus, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for a tarot and oracle card reading for all Taurus. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Today's reading will be a general reading. I post new readings on Monday and Friday. Fridays are always a general reading. Mondays are a different style every week. I've also been doing some Wednesday bonus readings, and those are not in any particular week of the month, just whatever moves me. So if you'd like to see those, I'd really appreciate it if you, you would hit the like button on this reading. It does something to the algorithm so that this reading will be seen. But then I've also noticed too, for my own market research, when I subscribe to a channel and I don't hit the like button, the videos eventually will disappear from my algorithm. It's wild. So anyway, let us begin. What advice do you have for Taurus, please? What does Taurus need to know, please, for the best and highest good of all involved with Taurus? Messages for Taurus. All right, we will lay out the tarot here. We're also going to pull a Moonology Manifestation Oracle card as well. Get kind of the underlying theme to things here. All right, you have the death card, which we love in the tarot. The king of swords, that also says cutting something out that doesn't serve you. The three of pentacles, the two of cups. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna be a, a void. It's like you're replacing it with something better. The high priestess, the 10 of wands, the knight of cups, and the three of wands. So two major arcana here. We've got Scorpio energy. We've got water, air, fire, earth, all the elements. And you've got here, last quarter moon in Capricorn. Leave the past behind. That's what the tarot is saying too. So I feel like if you have some feeling, especially with the high priestess here, it's about it's about really getting your a handle on that, following your intuition, following your guide, and allowing yourself to take that leap of faith. You also have two threes here, which I feel like are also important because threes are mystical numbers. They're magical numbers. And uh, truthfully, they're, they're, you know, they're ancient numbers, okay? We can go through history and find all the places where threes were important. Um, but with this death card, it's always about a new beginning. It's a rebirth and it's honestly exhilarating. So I feel like you're, if you're waiting on a decision, if you've been waiting to sell a house or you've been trying to get into a place or you've been in on a search for something, I feel like the search is finally over. And it's very decisive energy. It's it's like, I feel like all the, the front loading, the research, the whatever needed to happen was done. So you're not gonna have a decision made and then find out, and there's all these holdups. Okay, this is one that moves forward. So the death card helps you also let go of any old past patterns, anything that didn't work out for you. He walks over that wreckage of the past, but he also too, you see that tiny little ship in the backdrop, his ships are coming in. The skeleton represents your higher self telling you it's time to let go of something. So I get it very much with even this energy. Now, usually I'm going to point this out before we do this, how similar the Knight of Cups and the Death card are. Okay. If you've never noticed that before. Now the the Knight of Cups and the Death card both really are about joyfully moving towards something better. So they're not a negative card, especially death. It's one of the most misunderstood cards in the tarot. You have an offer coming in. If it's a relationship, it will be one that is a complete match. You have a true partnership showing up here. And somebody too, I feel like they're very, going to be very physically affectionate. Someone who just likes to be and physical contact tact with you, it's energetic to them. It's like, it's it's an inner two energy bodies blending is what I feel like, and that's why they do it. It's just, there's something about it. And so you might find with this person too, you go on new adventures, you go on bike rides, you rent bikes or you rent scooters, or you go do things that you said, I'd said I'd never do that. I was never going to do that, and here you are. Okay, I also see somebody on going on, going on a, what looks like some sort of a, a boat cruise, like a city tour or something like that. Even if you say, yeah, I've lived in Chicago in my whole life and I've never taken one of those river cruises, I'm telling you what, you're gonna be getting on it. And so with this, it's a card though, this is, these are bliss, this is fun. It's like your heart sings when you're in this energy. So if something happened 
that was challenging. I just don't see it sticking around with this death card. It, it really is about a brand new beginning. It's it's letting go of the old and having new come in, new from the old. It's transformational energy. And so the King of Swords makes it pretty final, quite honestly. Now, we said leave the past behind. The Oracle said it, and so was the Tarot. So with this uh, King of Swords energy, he's very much reasonable. So it's not decisions that you don't want. It's not a decision that is not in your favor. It's totally in your favor. And I also feel like, too, you may embody this energy where once it's like once you make a decision, you're not going to be talked out of it. It's once and for all. However, like I said, he's very reasonable. So he looks at everything and you have it here too, this analytical energy where you look at everything before you make a decision. So there's nothing impulsive here. And I feel like it's been a long time coming. So if it's a job that you're leaving, you may have been thinking and kicking this around for years or even the end of a relationship. And if that's the case, you've got a match coming in. So if it's been a while and you say, no, that was a year ago, it's time for you to get yourself out there, Taurus. Now, the King of Swords, like I said, it was, and swords were nobility when the cards were made. So he sits in his power. He also, too, doesn't care much what other people think about him. And it's not in an arrogant or a hurtful way. All right? So it's not about hurting people and saying, well, I don't care. That's their problem. Absolutely not. He's not, he's not that callous. It's more like you have to live life for yourself. And so he doesn't have codependent energy at all. He just doesn't operate like that. So I'd also tell you too, with a new relationship, it could be an air sign, but it's somebody who knows who they are. And, and with the codependent energy, they're not going to be codependent all over you. Now, sometimes that can seem fun. If you know anybody, and if you understand this, I've read the book Codependent No More repeatedly because they like to do and do and do for, for others. But the problem with it is it's to get your behavior to, to control you. And so when you stop responding to that, then they don't, the codependent people don't like it. So I do feel like you're gonna be in a very healthy relationship, even if it's with your workplace. If you say, no, I was codependent with my workplace, that's gonna be ending. So this three of pentacles for somebody here, if it is about a move, this is an architect, just so you know, making plans for the future. I also feel like, too, if somebody gets a new job, if you have an opportunity to go on a vacation, I feel like they're going to be great about working around that. So if you present that in the beginning, I don't see it as being a problem. These are This is an affable energy. It's an energy of teamwork, of collaboration, of no problem. We can make that work. And of wanting their employees to be happy. Now, if you're, if you're running a business for yourself and you're self-employed, you're entrepreneurial, this is also about finding the right people to work with you, vendors, or whether it's a financial thing, a ta even a tax accountant, whatever it is, it's somebody who will work with you and understand your needs. They are a great listener too, especially in the business world. I feel like it's somebody who really wants to hear what you need and move forward from there. So I feel like somebody has an appointment coming up that's going to be important and it's going to work out. It's You're going to walk away feeling light and feeling like, yes, I'm on the right path with this. Now for others of you with a relationship, so we've got it again here too. I get it this way too. Being in a relationship where you're moving in together, you're making plans so that vacation may be with somebody here. I even feel like somebody, if you have a, a summer house or they do in your family, it may be them saying, hey, we've got this place on a lake. I'd love to have you come, that sort of thing, or I'm hosting something there. It just feels like it's very welcoming. You've got this welcoming energy. So the Two of Cups is an automatic match. It's where you feel you feel immediately at home. You can be yourself. You can let your guard down. And, you know, tr we haven't talked about this in a minute, but trauma brains, traumatized be you know people, and it's any of us, right? We can all find some area of our lives. But it is, it's oftentimes results in being a bit guarded. We can't immediately be ourselves until we understand what we're dealing with, right? And so with this, I feel like it may also be your own healing that's a part of it. But I feel like the situation or person you're attracting is, is trustworthy. They're up front. And whoever this is, too, they give you their undivided attention. When you're with them, you are their focus. They're not getting on their phone and just doing things that are kind of rude and dismissive. I don't like that, do you? I don't care for it at all. But I do feel like with this, you know, if they need to watch Higher Source Tarot, they're going to do it before they knock on your door. 
They're not going to be sitting at a restaurant watching YouTube, okay, <laughs> while they're or wearing, you know, AirPods while they're talking to you. You know, it's like somebody who can actually give you their attention. And they do it because they, they're into you. They want to. They want, they're, you're more important than whatever else is going on. So you're a priority. And so we don't want you to be an option. You're never an option. You're a priority. So the high priestess comes in, and this is a card of the psychic. The high priestess is also about being true to yourself. So if you're hearing that and you say, I'm in a relationship where I'm an option, I'm not a priority, that may be for you. Okay, the cards don't lie, but the messages come through to find you. So some of you that might not resonate, others of you, if you say, I'm almost ready to turn off the reading because I'm damn near in tears. Okay, it's this. Okay, but the cards aren't trying to hurt you. They're just trying to guide you. And sometimes they touch soft spots, don't they? And you go, man, that one got me. But it's sacred divination. There is energy. There's communication coming out of these cards. So with this, she's all about staying true to herself. And you know what? That book of Torah that she holds on her lap, The Laws of Life, it's information that we all have. It's information that we know and we feel and we feel it deep down and sometimes we don't want to. And so we try to talk ourselves out of it. But in this energy, you will not do that to yourself. This is the kind of energy where you say, I feel that and I'm going to take action. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to do it on my own terms. But she's also to this card of being in flow. So when you take action, it's easy to step in the right direction. Now, the Ten of Wands here, I do feel like you're coming to the conclusion the search is over. I think I might have said that earlier. So if it's a job situation, if it's been a hunt of a house or even in relationships where you say, I really need a partner. This is too much to carry. I feel like you're going to have a true partner where you won't be in a position like that. Because with the King of Cups, now this is very romantic energy. So I mentioned in a situation, it's you moving towards something that's quite lovely. The, um, the Knights come of service. They come to help you. They're they're here to save the day, really. And so with this, it is it is a romance. Um, and it's, it's somebody who's quite, I feel like they're quite introspective. They understand who they are. But again, this is a time of happiness, all right? And so it's a situation where you're going to feel like you're moving in the right direction. You also have, too, that trusted keeper of secrets comes in a few different times. So the three of wands, you're ready, Taurus. It's time for you to take that leap of faith. So let's see now what the angels want to tell you. It's time for your expansion. All right, what else does Taurus need to know? Messages for Taurus. Advice, please, for Taurus. You've got big, happy changes. This one we've been on a run with. I don't, don't see it at all, and then suddenly I'm seeing it. Listen to your intuition, and you've got to ask for help from others, all right? It's time for you to hit the change, take action, they say, and choose a new direction. So time to move forward, Taurus. Good things are on the way. I love you, and I'll be back again soon.